All right, we are here. Welcome, everyone. It is time yet again. Um, good to see. Oh gosh, I I tried to to find a thing and I typed up the name of this show from like five years ago. Um, uh, boy, it's been kind of one of those weeks, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> so yes, welcome everyone to the weekly dig. Um, it's Saturday night, and for anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. I am Brent. These are my fantabulous co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Konbanwa. Hi, John. And Steve. Hola, Esteban. Cool. Um, Steve's having some internet issues tonight, so we'll see how well that, that, uh, that, that stays up. It seems fine now, so that's cool. Um, let us start the dig tonight by continuing with our discussion from last week. We're going to dig into, yeah, into more of Serial Experiments Lane. Just, just be gentle. Steve's Navi is not the updated version <laughs> with the Copeland OS system. Yeah. yeah. So. No. You really got to upgrade from that child's Navi, Steve. You know, yeah. Come on. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so we're we're, we're diving in uh, again. We saw episodes one through two, or talked about episodes one through two before. Yes. Um, three um, is really more. Oh wow! Um, I need to turn off the subtitles on this. Uh, so you're not seeing the Russian subtitles. Um, but the um, uh, this episode is really continuing on. It is um, episode is called Psyche or Pisuke. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and. <laughs> Yeah, it oh, starts goodness. with uh, really, literally, just a continuation from previous episode because now we have Lane in a police uh, uh, room um, being talked to by a police officer after the events of the previous night, um, or I guess previous in the night. Uh, for those who don't remember or who haven't been following along, so uh, Lane finally went out with her friends, and there was a shooter. <clears throat> in the club and lane approached him talked to him and he proceeded to shoot himself um and so the um the uh the, this this detective is talking to lane about what's happening she's clearly not really talking much and not really saying much um i suspect that's also partly because like i don't know that she was that she told her parents she was going out that night or any of that kind of stuff, uh, which is, of course, pretty, pretty common. Um, interestingly, which, honestly, it's not like her parents that would seem really like they care. would even react. No, to that, that's but, very yeah. true. And we'll see more of that later. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, you see in the background Alice um, kind of at the window and who are presumably her parents, uh, which I think is the only time you see Alice's parents in this. Um, so a quick shot of that. Uh, they both seem kind of concerned. Alice is looking in um, to see Which, Lane. again, to, to my comment, that's probably a fairly good indicator that Alice has a family mm -hmm. who is engaged in why are you here and how can we help you? And Lane's by herself talking to the police officer. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, I love the symbolism here of Alice and Lane being literally like, you know, separated from each other. Like there's this, yeah. this wall between the two of them that's opened up now that Lane's behaving kind of weird. Um, it's just to point out, if you've seen Digimon Tamers, which is the spiritual sequel to Serial Experiments Lane, you heard that right, um, there are um, parallels there with, uh, with Jerry and her parents. Um, Did I need to know that? Yeah, oh, oh, we can get, we will pro I, I might do a whole episode <laughs> on the parallels I mean, between Digimon Tamers and Lane. Didn't you show part of that at the I onsen? Did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because so I remember being like, "What?" Yeah. Okay. It um it, it goes places. That show definitely goes places. <laughs> uh, to be clear, uh, um, Chucky Jikanaka, the writer of Lane, has said that if he asks a lot of questions in Serial Experiments Lane, Digimon Tamers contains his answers to those questions. So it's sort of you know, if I'm opening up these sort of topics, you know, how do I think people should behave? If you Anyway, so yeah, again, we could, we, could, we, we could talk about that, but also Tamers is the 50 episodes, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But um, um, Alice is, is, is looking at, at Lane, and we get this wonderful moment um, where Alice runs in and grabs Lane's hands, 
and says, Lane, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sorry for this thing that happens to, happened to you, is this kind of trauma. Uh, John, we will hear that same phrase later, will we not? Near yeah. the end of the show. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this is actually flashing forward like episode 11 or 12 or something. Uh, a scene there, and they're just kind of planting the seed for that here in a very intelligent way. Um, but it's interesting how, like, now we have... I mean, Alice has always been interested in Lane, but now Alice has a deeper connection. Yeah. Um, you know, clearly, like, she feels responsible for this. Um, and Lane is now responding more directly. Yeah. You know, she clearly wants that. In fact, I think there's a, a moment where... Um, um, you know, Alice pulls her, her hands away, um, and Lane looks sad that Alice has pulled away. Um, so a relationship has definitely been um, been established here. Well, up to this point, we've seen, you know, you think of the dinner time with mm-hmm. uh, Mika and Lane's parents and Lane, and everybody's just intensely isolated in their in their own sphere. Yeah. Alice is this like only character that shows up Mm -hmm. that gives a crap about what's going on with Lane. Yeah. Not that she's, you know, Mm -hmm. is she eating? Is she there? Is she not there? No. What is her psychological state? Mm -hmm. What is her emotional state? What is the connection with other people? And it's like, Mm -hmm. Alice is the one who approaches Lane for that. And that you see as Lane starts to open up to contact with someone Mm -hmm. and, and how that sort of blossoms and, moves on from there Mm -hmm. yeah um in contrast to the following scene where lane comes home (laughs) dropped off by the cops to the completely empty house um in kind of in fairness like she she does tell the cop you know they didn't send the phone because they're out they're just not there so presumably lane knows they're not there she's aware of what's going on um john you mentioned the interesting theory that um they or maybe steve they, they seem to be maybe on shifts like work shifts yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and that certainly um, seems possible. But we get this long scene of Lane, and like their beds are not slept in. Nope. Um, and this is clearly late at night, um, and just everything is empty. And Lane comes uh, uh, back home, and her computer is on. Yep. Which is kind of interesting. Remember, nineteen ninety eight. You did not leave your computer on if you were leaving the house. Um, right. You know all. Well, and, all the power. and here's a. Here's a question for you. Mm. Given the I Love Lucy bedroom of her parents. <laughs> um, yep. For uh, standards and practices of the time, mm. was mm. showing a, a parental bedroom with a single bed right. n- not capable? Or, you know what I mean? Like, this, right. is, a yeah. very, this is a very unusual bedroom mm-hmm. layout for parents in that time period, because I think that, you know, in the late Mm. 90s, you had cohabitation was a thing. Oh, yeah. You know, eons before that they were like, no, you have to have double beds. Lest we forget, this is Japan. Every, you know, they would have both slept on a futon, you know, before the beds came around. Right. Um, So I think this is a, is a Mm. pretty Mm -hmm. distinct statement that goes back to not only shift work, but what I had said last week about, Mm. it seems very interesting, like they're the observation team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if they and, have to play house, they've got two mm-hmm. separate beds because they are not necessarily, with that awkward kiss in the hallway, <laughs> the side, um, they are yeah. not necessarily Ugh. an actual family mm-hmm. as much as they are a construct for the purposes of Lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Quite possible. Um, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, we, we get this, this creepy empty house that Lane is wandering around in. Um, and her computer. And she's not all that like super concerned. Either. No. So you know this is not t- the first time. This is normal. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I was just gonna say. It seems like she was just like, oh yeah, okay, by myself again. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Yep. Um, I'll shuffle along in my old lady house <laughs> looking out. <laughs> shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Little bear uh, uh, slippers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it should be, also be pointed out like they slow this scene the f down. You know, you watch her walk all the way across the room. They're really driving home the fact that she is alone. And what they're pointing out here, I think, is that, you know, at home she cannot find connection in her family. 
Yeah. She can find connection in the internet. You know, yeah. that is what draws her in. That is her connection to other things is this glow. That's screen. what's waiting for her. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know yes. what I mean? It's like like mm-hmm. uh, latchkey kids and the discussions in the in the 80s and 90s about, oh, you're just leaving TV to be the babysitter. It's like, mm-hmm. welcome to Lane's world. <laughs> yeah. oh. Babysitter <laughs> is the Navi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And, you know, let's, you know, let's not forget, like, this is and, definitely and, a thing. Right, a lot, yeah. a lot of teenagers have this life with whether it's the internet or TV or whatever. And certainly, and anime didn't, subsequently didn't father... showed that everybody lives alone. Mm-hmm. All kids in high school <laughs> live by themselves without parents. So it's true, yes. And and didn't her father like kind of push her onto you know hey this is how you can you this is mm-hmm. how you how you talk to people how you relate. Yep. Yep, and you know, in 1998, that's that's kind of an unusual thing because I don't think my my parents in in 98 well. Was old enough not to worry. About <laughs> if I was a kid in '98, my parents would not be uh, be like going, "Oh yeah, just hop on AOL and just yeah. hang out there yeah. and, like, outside." Now. Go into an un, yeah. un uh, monitored chat room and just talk with the funny people that are there. Uh, I, I, I I do want to point out. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> for those familiar with Rift Tracks, they do. They're the people behind Mystery Science Theater 3000s. They make fun of things. They do comment, commentary tracks. They did a commentary track for. A Parent's Guide to the Internet from 1994, I believe it is. Wow. <laughs> Which is this like half hour, oh, you know, video about, you know, getting online and so forth. And there's literally a line where the, the mother of the family turns and goes, my, my kids spend all their time on the internet. It's great. <laughs> it's like, oh. No. Oh. Well, it depends on what they're looking at. Yeah. Have you have you guys heard of news groups and why people shouldn't go in there? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Uh, AOL Prodigy. Rec God. Arts. Yeah. It, it gets, it gets oh, into Jesus. Pre- creepy places. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, then that's clearly what's happening with Lane here is that this is yeah. – she's now, you know, sucked into this world, so to speak. It's also funny how, um, you yeah, she falls asleep um, – um, she she logged in no new mail, um, and then she wakes up in heaven. Um, you know, suddenly it's all bright light. It's all just this lovely kind of thing. The next morning, almost like it was all a dream. Um, and she has this this <laughs> frankly, a psychotic break. Yeah. Oh uh, well, and I think um, uh, they they're also probably referencing Evangelion here, because um, she wakes yeah. up in bed and looks up at the ceiling. And then looks back down, which is very much like Unfamiliar Ceiling, episode two of Evangelion. Um, because there is a certain amount of, you know, we had this crazy thing happen before, and now we're kind of back in, in, um, in normality. The um, mundane life. Mundane life. Um, I also appreciate the kind of misdirection here, where we cut to water flowing, which in any other anime series would, be, would, would cue a shower scene. Right. Uh, no, she's just mother doing dishes. Um, it's actually an interesting thing about, about Lane. Um, this show never sexualizes its characters. Um, yeah. There's no fan service. There's none of that. And it's got teen girls all through it. Um, but it never, like, takes that sort of low road. There is certainly sexuality in the show. Right. Um, but there's well, it's no, also, you know, it's a matter of degree. Whatever. Well, there's mm-hmm. a de- matter of degree. Mm-hmm. Right. The dance club has mm-hmm. people writhing at, at a point sure. where there's, you know, clear indications of what's mm-hmm. going on and people paired off as, as mm-hmm. Lane's trying to get in there. There's yep. folks who are paired off. Right. Um, the gratuitous moment of, of, of mother and father in right. the hallway. So there, you know, there's something going on uh. there, but you have, as it progresses, you do have a, a the most vague light touch of sexualization of Lane. Hmm. And it's it's interesting to see that it comes oh, more okay. in the yeah. form mm-hmm. of like wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like right. yeah. so it's not it's you're right. It's not a heavy hand. It's not mm-hmm. like whoops, Lane falls down. Pants right. Are <laughs> oh, that's funny. Gosh, let's go into the locker room. Hey, Alice, your boobs are bigger than mine. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. No, boink, boink. you don't yeah. have that. Mm-hmm. You know, they definitely did not go the low road on that. Mm-hmm. But you do have this gradual, yeah, awakening mm-hmm. that yeah. I is really. It's entirely native to what's going on with Lane. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. anything that's out of the ordinary, out of the weird. 
it's part of that progression that she is making mm-hmm. from from one to, to 13. Yeah. That's just like, mm-hmm. wow, this is an interesting opening of what we see, what's happening. Well, and, you know, she, she's a young teenager. You know, she's right. starting to explore sexuality and so forth and so on. You do see that in later episodes. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, but it is interesting how, how the show just kind of is not interested at all in, in fan service and such. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Lane, well, Lane. Got, they have an agenda that's for oh, yeah. the fan service. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Really. Not a fan service show. Well, to be honest, we have so many other things that we're like <laughs> worrying and trying to figure out. And just like going, oh, dear God. Wait, wait. Do I have to really think of it? No, please, God. <laughs> I'm, I've got too much going on here. One thing I appreciate about Pixiv is that you know, if you search for Lane fan art, almost none of it is R18. Almost none of it oh, is 18 plus. Goodness. Because the fandom's like, <laughs> so I was gonna say, just no, not what this thing is. You know? Yeah, that's um, not what we're please. looking for here when she's wearing her like coma 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 <laughs> outfit there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no solace in her parents. It should be pointed out that point out that her her mother says, you know, basically you're late for school. Um, and and you should you should feel bad for being late to school. Nobody woke her up. Nope. Nobody woke her up, and it was such a monotone that it was. Mm-hmm. I, I you know I almost was just like, it's it's almost as if she was like you know, had her cell phone and just like oh the girl's up. Okay, mm-hmm. what am I going to say here? Um, yep. um, you should be embarrassed that you have slept through. Okay, go. Ahead. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Somebody, it, it somebody just, off stage very... left should be being like. <laughs> Emote, damn it! Emote. <laughs> Read the line emote. and emote. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and there, there's there's definitely a, a sort of play acting to the way she kind of mothers Wayne. Yeah. Um, a sort of and not you know, good play. No, no. Just not like I, I know no. you should receive some instruction here, so I will give you instruction moving on. Yeah. Um, line do, do you one, feel go resentment to line ten from her. <laughs> Say what? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel resentment from from the mother a little bit like you know the, yeah. the mother figure but mm-hmm. the, yeah the, that she has to be there yeah mm-hmm. clearly she doesn't yeah. want to be there no you know and what you know it's, it, it does not feel like this is like oh the company has hired me to be lane's mother i'm mm. earning a paycheck I, it's feels like i got roped into this because of mom whatever yeah. what that mm-hmm. whatever that is yeah um, more fast to put up with a creepy little kid, yeah, another, you know, another <laughs> child actor, and uh, a guy who they, you know, it's weird. <laughs> um, is, is, now, so it, I have I forget, is it what is, is it four or five, or I'm sorry, three or four, where she goes, where she goes, uh, to the older sister and says, mm. um, you berates her over something and turns to father and, and basically says. That's right, right? I mean, that's yeah. right, honey. I right? think that's four, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, now, it should be pointed out, um, I have a different theory about, about that uh, and about kind of the, the relationship between father and mother and, and everyone else. Uh, Morph asks in the chat room, um, would Lane work if she was a boy? Um, I would argue that Lane's um, sex is less important to the show other than the fact that in in later episodes you get um, elements with like you know, Lane obviously cares very deeply for Alice, is that romantic attraction, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so I would obviously play around with that a little bit. Um, I would also argue that there are stronger metaphorical underpinnings to her being female, um, Earth Mother kind of stuff, a uh, maiden right. mother crone kind of things, um, where it's more of a female role that she plays in the story. Uh, to some extents, um, but it, it's a it's a it's a a valid thing that this is not a show about. Um, it's certainly not a show about romance. It's not a show about like, you know, uh, there, there boy no girl being thing. No, no, <laughs> oh. Well, I wonder there too if no you had made here. Lane, if you had made Lane a guy, mm. would would the Lane we see in the Wired mm. be as as unexpectedly divergent interesting yeah or you know would that fall yeah. into more of a stereotypical be like oh well that's simple he's he's oppressed and mm. you know in mm. every other thing in life mm. and he strikes out in, right. in the internet because gosh you know that's what guys do they're violent angry right like True. so you know what i mean it's a it's a really interesting juxtaposition to seeing lane who is so demure and so quiet and mm-hmm. so, so shelled yeah see her 
opening up into the wired where it's like she starts to be far different. Yeah, you could also argue that there's you know there's an important concept here that you know, you know in traditional Japanese culture, girls are supposed to be demure. They're supposed to be quiet and shy. And so if we saw a boy being like this, we'd immediately think, oh, something's wrong. Right. But we see a girl like this, right. and he's like, oh, well, she's just shy. That's just right. what she's like. We're like, no, actually, like, this is bad. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 actually this was a really good question. Um, uh, but going back to the, the to the sexuality part of it, mm. one of the things one of the things that um, you know, you know, the joke, joking aside about the pantsuit shots, I think part of the reason why is that Lane is very just asexual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Up until mm -hmm. a certain till certain points, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that will change as we go mm -hmm. forward, but. You know that might be part of what she's learning how to do and learning yeah, how to be. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Characteristic skirts it, it are very minimal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's kind of like you know, if you if if Lane was a boy, mm. you know, you could probably get away with that too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a, a learning yeah construct. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the the, the issue of popularity is is kind of. Um, Hard to tell because so many anime characters are boys, and they're certainly successful. Um, right. You know, it doesn't seem to to prevent mm -hmm. other shows from having a successful uh, uh, hero. Um, um, I know it was again Urobochi who said he he draws or he he tells stories about girls because um, girls are half the people on the planet, um, <laughs> and he he thinks it, it's it's interesting to explore their you know right. their their reality and their their experiences as much as a guy can. Um, and so, uh, you know, this could also be just a matter of, well, what is it like from that perspective? You know? Right. Well, I think you certainly yeah. you know, nail on the head when you're talking about, you know, the demure nature of women in, mm -hmm. in Japanese society this, that watching this now from the 21st century in 2021, we're watching something that was created for a domestic market in mm -hmm. 1998 yeah. that is fully seated yeah. entirely within its culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... You know, it's one of those things. You look at things in their milieu. You don't look at things from the <laughs> lens of time, yep. where you're like, "Well, that was just wrong." Mm -hmm. You're like, at the time, it was what it was. Yeah. That was the way things were. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, Lane as a boy, that might not have been how that was going to fly culturally. Yeah, that it just might have worked better for the storytelling style mm -hmm. and what the what they were trying to get across by having Lane be exactly like Lane is. And a good example of that actually is with the Men in Black, which we see in the next scene. Where having somebody observing, you know, a child going down the street is rather different for girls than for boys, yeah. right? There, there, there are implications there for what happens to girls who are abducted versus boys, um, which adds a whole level of, of creep factor. And here's, of course, where you get the the wonderful first off fisheye lens on Lane, which I noticed the first time here when she's walking past, which is a really neat effect because I don't think yeah. they actually. Added a fisheye lens. I think the, the person just animated it that way. Just like, <laughs> um, <laughs> must have been fun. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and this is where you first see, I believe, yeah, the, uh, the little Zaku eyes in there, the little, little red dots, yeah, uh, in there, kind of following her. Um, which you know, you think first time watching this. Actually, I'm curious, Steve. What did you think this was the first time you saw it? A little red dot in the car. <sighs> I, you know, I, I, I gotta be honest. It reminded me of Armitage. Oh yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah reminded me of, of Armitage. Yeah, and, uh, interesting. Why? Like, oh, why? Man. What happened to that? Oh man. Armitage has. There's a scene with a with a car and 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 like and, and basically it's it's not eyes. It's lasers coming out trying to kill her. Like you know, oh, gun sight lasers. Very good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because that's the thing. I mean, you, you can you can associate this with laser pointers. You can associate it with, with sniper sights, the Terminator, right? Yeah. Like there's a lot of different different things there. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that the show doesn't tell you what it is. There's just a little right. red light, and you move on. Um, I initially thought it was cigarettes. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, it's like it's as at, you know, it makes total sense when you see them later. Be like, oh, that's what it is. Right. But at the time, I'm like, somebody smoking a cigarette would be like. Trying to be like real clandestine, in the, you know, dark <laughs> windows, but they're like smoking and watching yeah. her and turning with a cigarette. Be like, wow, that's really pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, neat scene. Um, and then Lane runs off. Yeah, and then that's a good point, Morph. And then we have you know the stuff with Taro later. Um, 
Lane, uh, one of the things I yeah. did notice, too, that I meant mm -hmm. to bring up from oh, yeah. last time, mm -hmm. we were talking about uh, Chi Sao and the blue shift, red shift. Mm -hmm. As you watch Lane mm -hmm. going, it just, it occurred to me today, mm -hmm. like, seeing more of it again, mm -hmm. that there is a distinct blue shift, red shift, and it all makes a point. Yeah? That blue shift coming towards you, red shift going away from you, um, as in, you know, how, like, when they're gauging you know, they, whether like, a star or a solar system is coming towards us. Oh, from yeah. Us, like, from, from there is a yeah. distinct blue shift, red shift, and it appears in not only shadows, but it also appears in clothing and scenes where Lane is either going towards someone or away from someone, wow. or she herself is wearing red. Wow. Which, when I saw the red dots, I'm like, Okay, that's there's a lot of reds in this. What's up with yeah. all that? Oh my God, it's a blue shift, red shift. <laughs> is she going towards things or away from things, or are things approaching her? I'm like, oh boy, I hope. Ow. I hope, that's, <laughs> so. I hope that's just me having like an aneurysm and not like, <laughs> like not like the creators are sitting I, back being like, oh yeah, I'll I throw this it. in. That'll screw I them. I believe <laughs> it. You know, this this is a a very deliberate <sighs> show. Yeah. Um, so. that's that's a great point. We'll have to watch out for that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and so, he, and then, <laughs> um, she gets yeah. on the, uh, the, the train and she hears a voice. This is Ugh. where we first hear the voice in her head. And there go her pupils again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Pupils are yeah. getting a little different now. Um, uh, yeah. And she starts freaking out about this, this, this voice in her head. Who basically just says, no, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Okay. okay. Great. Um, and it's one of the weird things about, about the show is that, you know, this guy starts talking to her in her head, she hears a few things, has this little conversation, and then we just move on from that. Like, that's not a, that's not the climax of the episode. No, that's just a thing that happens. That's why I think she's got the deep disassociation. Nothing like that disorder. just happens in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. When the voices start talking to you, you know, uh, start having the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be worried. Oh, don't worry. This happens all the time. And meanwhile, the rest of the buses are going like creepy tag. They're like, oh. To quote, Craig, to quote the great Craig Ferguson, um, you talking to God, that's prayer. God talking to you, that's schizophrenia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, there you go. <laughs> At least uh, you didn't say it's so loud in here. Right. You know? <laughs> Not to discount religion and all that kind of stuff, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's a joke. But then we get the scene, um, which I did not notice this um, in my previous uh, watching. Um, she gets in, in here. Um, they're, they're talking about what's happening at the club. Um, and um, the girls talk about um, the club and Lane was there and she saw this thing and so forth and how crazy it was. None of the girls mention what Lane did. Yeah. Even though they're talking about what's right. happening, and I think they are deliberately covering for her. Because partway through this, like, like Alice sees her, comes over, Lane sees that, and Alice and Lane share this little smile. And I think Lane realizes, oh, you're talking about the thing at school, but the three of you are not getting me in trouble with other people in school. Cool, thank you, that's nice. Um, and so there's a certain little thing where I think Alice is and in, and. In, in, Julian Reka are all kind of have all kind of figured out how to spin this so as as to kind of help Lane, which is really really well, nice. And I kind of get the sense that Alice is she's the she's kind of more of the alpha in that mm -hmm. little triumvirate, mm -hmm. and that because mm -hmm. she has this connection to Lane, that she, her blanket of protection has fallen on Lane. So the other two girls are going with where yeah. she's sort of setting the point. Mm -hmm, so it's totally. like, hey, this is cool. What happened? Oh, things happened. Da 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 da. But Hey kids, let's not let's not mention her. She's yeah. so shy. Let's not mm -hmm. get into that. Yeah. Um, and in fairness, you know, again, Alice literally saw Lane afterwards, saw what happened. So I'm sure she went back yeah. to the girls and was like, Th "That was clearly massively traumatic. Like, let's not dig yeah. into that." Um, yeah. Ex exactly, Morph. I, I think that's you know, we're simpatico there. Um, yeah. Let's not re-traumatize Lane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She's got a uh, lot on her plate right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, like, she's got a lot going on. Let's uh, slide. Her, yeah, her, her school's not going great for her right now. Her <laughs> concentrating. Um, 
She uh, just can't pick up on this programming class or following <laughs> yeah, exactly. the Navi architecture in her textbooks. Exactly. Um, oh. You know, Chisa is talking to her during classroom. the class. It's all fine. She, everything's yeah. fine now. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, the drawing um, in the circle mm, thing. I'm like, oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's right. bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. She's, that's she's really bad. She's, yeah. Um, she's having a time. Yeah. Um, and so to, to connect in with, with, with some of the stuff that's been happening, um, things first started sort of spiraling out of control, so to speak. <laughs> uh -huh. um, on the train, when she sees the blood and sort of connects with the other girl. Um, and then she's having other traumatizing experiences at school. Then she has an experience at the club. And then Ari starts speaking to her on the train again. Um, or um, not again, but for the first time. Um, and so she's having a number of these weird things happening to her. And it's, it's obviously building up. Um, uh, and then we get this. <laughs> it's building up to a happy ending? <laughs> you could argue. Um, what is happy? <laughs> I don't God. know what happy means. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just define happy. Yeah, define what you mean by happy. Um, yeah. I, I, I will define the ending of, of Lane as, as... An ending. <laughs> the definition of being sweet. Okay. That's how I, I define it. Okay. Um, but then we get sort of the... I can't, the, I can't wait to, to get oh. to the ending and just go, No! It wasn't! <laughs> well, kind of... And you're right, we're orange lied. colors here. We're, we're getting orange. Um, get red shift and a lot red, red of stuff shift. going yeah. on. Um, as, as we get the um, high school romance um, moment of the anime series where Lane opens her, uh, her, her, her uh, shoe yeah, locker shoe and locker. gets a letter. Yeah. Uh, and for those not familiar, it is traditional in Japanese schools that if you like somebody, you leave a letter for them in their locker at school. Because there really aren't any other kind of personal spaces in a Japanese school. There's technically the you know the table, the desks, and so forth, but that's kind of weird. Uh, and everyone's in the the, the, the rooms at all, all, the, all the time, so you can kind of sneak down, uh, uh, slide something into their locker, and then they can find it and pull it out. So this is, you know, Lane got a, a love letter, which of course Reka immediately leaps onto and is you know, little Lane got a love letter. Um. um Oh, that's interesting. Great, great point, she reminds Morph. Reminds me of that character from Phineas and Ferb. Oh yeah, which one? Uh, um, I think Candace, their sister. Yeah. What? Um, no, maybe it's not Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. There's there, there's a there's a um, Cartoon Network uh, cartoon mm. uh, from from years ago, yeah. and um, there's a character that looks like her. Oh, interesting. Um, Asian okay. character. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the show. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I've seen bits and pieces of Phineas and Ferb, but not enough. Um, that's a great point, Morph Ball. This is a girls only school. Um, ah. And, hey, uh, they could still have love letters. Just true. And uh, although uh, Morph is pointing out in the chat room that Kanaka admitted he, he kept forgetting that this was a girls only school. Yeah. And so, like, oh, you got to, you know, so it's not really would be necessarily tradition in a girls school. But anyway. Well, also, I mean, in all fairness, they never really address that. It's not yeah. like, hey, Lane, how's your first day at all girls school? It's true. You know, yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's just okay. You have to kind of look around the, the, the classroom and realize yeah. it. Um, which is also interesting that you got placed in an all girls school. Anyway, um, but the uh, uh, it does not contain a confession. It contains a chip, a little microchip. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, who's who's sending Lane microchips? Um, and I do appreciate that they do like it's in a little ch chunk of foam. Yeah, you know, just like you would actually find, you know, you, you'd get it from Amazon or something. It's like, oh, hey, somebody, somebody knows how you do this. It isn't just oh, so it's you know, a pin's bent. Great, they didn't do this properly. Um, uh, and so um, yeah, so she goes home. Um, and um, I don't remember what the next big thing is. Again, things are kind of weird. I um, mean, the part where her father who doesn't yeah. even look at the chip mm -hmm. and says, yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, you didn't even look at look. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've, 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 something else I wanted to point out. Um, so the scene where they're, in, um, where they're talking is the scene where Alice points out, we were talking about before, that um, isn't it weird that we're all like, 
not massively traumatized by the shooting that we all witnessed. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we're just chatting about this thing. Like we didn't just see a man die in front of our eyes. And they were talking about how he was cute. Yeah. <laughs> pre blowing, mm -hmm. pre brains blown out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would argue, as we discover later, um, Siberia is a very special place. So yeah. it is possible that that is Siberia's unique effects on them. It's causing that because you don't see that anywhere else in their lives. You know, they seem perfectly well adjusted elsewhere. It's almost like when they're in Siberia, strange things happen and they're, uh, they're not affected the same way. So who knows? Um, that's, that's one possible explanation. Um, so yeah, we had that weird conversation between her and her father. Um, now, here's another piece of evidence where I think um, it, it becomes increasingly clear that Lane's father is checking up on her sort of existentially. Um, you know, checking up to make sure that she's there, that she's not, you know, curled up in a ball on the, on, on the floor. Um, but not psychologically. You know, he's not really interested in what's going on. And as you mentioned, he sees the, uh, the chip and just goes... No idea. And, but she, this conversation Interesting is, for a guy who has this, you know, massive mm -hmm. kit set up of his own. Right. Yep. And um, <clears throat> he turns and she says this weird thing. I thought you would know. And he goes, I said I don't know. Now, to me, this is the behavior of somebody who finds that chip disturbing. Somebody who you know, doesn't like that chip on some level. Um, he, he has some idea of what's going on, but he doesn't really want to confront it. And he kind of can't stop it. Um, and, and exactly, more. And he, he's, he's the one who wants her to, to, to use the computer. He's the one kind of pushing her to use the computer. But this is clearly not part of the plan. Um, and we'll, we'll Interesting. I had a different there. takeaway from that. Yeah? I, guess I thought he was checking in on her. Mm-hmm. And he, I don't know what that chip is. Mm. As in, I've got nothing to do with it. Mm. Discover it, Lane. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm watching to see what you're doing. Oh, okay. You've yeah. upgraded your Navi. You've got yeah. like, these different things going on. And now you've been given a tool. How will you use that tool? Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to just ignore it? Or are mm -hmm. you going to do something about it? And yep. I don't know. I can't help you. Mm. And then he's going to observe what she's going to do with it. Yeah. Um... According to my theory, I, I have I have a different thing, but we will see. Yeah, and possible foreshadowing for the role of the parents. Um, right. Should also be pointed out there is a um, she she's listening to she's obviously reading messages on the wired, um, and somebody men somebody um, is uh, freaking out about um, a child in a red and green striped shirt in their house. Um, remember that for later, everyone. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, remember that one. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Things are happening. Um, and so, yeah, and so then Lane goes back outside. We now have two little red sniper dots in, in there. So things are multiplying quite literally. Um, we have, we have uh, Lane finally goes to Siberia. She's going to try to track down what's going on. Um, interesting, Lane later in the series would have gone onto the wired to find out what's going on with, with the processor. Lane isn't there yet. You know, she's still yeah. thinking physical, I need to go to some physical location to research this thing. Um, uh, she goes past the levers on the stairs, um, <laughs> yeah. which reminds me oddly of digression, but I just want to uh, love it. Um, there's, uh, oh, hey, Matt. There's, um, uh, Mystery Science Theater had a, uh, one of their, their legendary movies was Manos, The Hands of Fate. Um, and it's a great one. It, it's, a, it's a fantastic episode. <laughs> Um, there's a recurring theme in that movie that there's, uh, there are these, uh, a boy and a girl parked in a car on, like, Lover's Lane, smooching, um, and, like, the, the, the people pass about them, and we keep cutting back to these characters, um, and, uh, all they ever do is kiss, um, and one of the riffs in, in the TV show is, you know, is, uh, what, something's come, something comes after this? Um, it's like, hmm? and, uh, I love as they're coming out, they're, mm, just kissing is enough. 
mm, mm, as she's going past him. <laughs> really? Ah. Really? Nice. Okay, guys. <laughs> Fine. I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, maybe, maybe in public. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. So, so, Lane decides to go inside. And we get, actually, the shot of her deciding to go inside. And you see that confident expression on her face. Um, and I think it's key here to show that Lane is um, taking action. She's clearly not, like, in the same mode she was in in Siberia before. Um, but she's now, like, um, um, a little bit more directed than she was before, deciding to go into she Siberia. Seems a bit more focused, like when they said, you were in Siberia before, like uh -huh. the other episode, with like, hey, you're that girl. Mm -hmm. and it's like, now it's like she's in that mode. Mm -hmm. That Alice is not Somewhere. around, and yeah. the other people are not around. Now, and, and isn't this where we meet the DJ who seems yeah. to recognize Yes, her? Yeah. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the DJ. I, I love him. I, I, I love the the uh, the English voice acting on this because he's like total surfer dude. It's great. Um, very, you know, very um, good. Oh, that's an interesting question, Matt. Are those the two people who were walking along in the first scene? And and saw Chisa. It could be. I'll have to go back and check like the colors on that. That's kind of interesting. Um, obviously, some time has passed, but who knows? Um, Given the way the lane goes, hey. yeah. Um, I'll also, it also, I mean, probably. if that is the, if, if that is true, the voice actors are probably also matched because they probably would have said, "Oh, by the way, make sure you're getting the same you know characters for these things." Right. Be worth checking out. <laughs> um, but that'd that'd be interesting. Um, we are all connected. So yeah, so she she, she meets the DJ. Hey, Lane. Yeah. Um, and he recognizes her. Absolutely. Now, when we saw Lane before the, the flashback from the nightclub, um, she was, like, ticked off. Um, yeah. She was yelling at somebody. Um, so she's clearly not in that mode. Um, but she has this, this short conversation. Um, and she, he points her, you know, her over to the three 12-year-olds in the nightclub. Yeah, the one girl looked like she was five. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was like, wait, wait a minute, were you? How do? You, okay, I used to sneak out when I was a kid. This is a zero to eight. But not at that age. Come on, <laughs> not, not at that age. At that age, I wouldn't even. I would get outside the window, and I'd probably go, "Oh, you know what? What do I do now?" And I think to go to a club. And I do. And yep. granted, you know, we have fourteen-year-olds in the club. We already know. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I also wonder if this isn't all sort of a commentary on um, on how society would evolve in the near future. That oh yeah, kids just go to clubs like this. This is just normal, you know. We we've gotten to that point in society where eh, whatever, it's fine. I don't know. Um, well, also think of uh, the early days as we were joking around about mm, AOL. Yeah. If you <clears throat> flip mm. Lane's world into a cyber reality. Mm -hmm. A chat room, yeah, or a club yep. would mm -hmm. be a place where you would uh, find people uh, of mm -hmm. multiple ages, including children. Yeah, yeah, very true. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so you you get Taro Mew Mew, and I always forget the name of the other kid. Um, guy, guy, <laughs> <laughs> boy A, <The> guy. Um, <laughs> boy A, <laughs> and uh, and you know, they're, they're all hanging out. Um, and uh, more. That's a that's a good theory. Um. But we'll get back to it. And so um, Lane asked them the question. And now Lane is like walking up to people and asking them questions. Something she would not have done three episodes ago. Um, and asking what, what the heck this thing is. Uh, Taro freaks out um, and gives us some, some handy exposition about the Pasuke processor. <laughs> not Psyche. Pasuke. Um, I will say... Knowing this show, I'm going to assume that the original staff was like, no, 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 pronounce it this way. That's, that's a thing. Like, it has to be pronounced yeah. this way. Okay. Okay. Like, there's some reason why it's not just called the Psyche Chip. The Psyche Processor. All right. Yeah. It could be blue. You're absolutely right, Morph. A lot of blue in this scene. Yep. Um, Weird things are afoot. Weird things happening. Um... And I do wonder if that... Weird things afoot in Lane? No. no yeah, hard to believe. 
Um, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> Uh, shocking, absolutely shocking. But yeah, and um, I, I do wonder if um, calling it Pasuke isn't trying to add some distance to saying this isn't literally the psyche chip. It isn't literally like changing your brain necessarily. Right. Um, but it is, you know, kind of related to that. Could be. I don't know. Oh, unlike itself. I think, I don't know, exactly. Uh, blue Shift also, Lane shift. has approached them. Mm hmm. Yep. So that the blue shift is her approaching them mm -hmm. to ask about this chip where Lane wouldn't normally. Yep. Totally. So. I, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, you also see in this scene actually both blue and red. You see blue and red shafts of light um, yep. indicating that there is kind of, you know, moving forward and coming away in a yeah. sense in this scene. Well, presumably there's somewhere in lane that need to approach and yet it being, mm -hmm. you know, trying to draw back to where she was in episode one, where she would have been away from these people and not mm -hmm. have approached them. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Taro asked her out on a date, which, yeah, smooth 12 year old. Um, yeah. Blue shift. Very strong blue shift. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Taro's a bit of a player. Just, just gotta say, um, uh, Mew Mew is not impressed. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, we then get a, this, this kind of surprising scene because uh, we go back to you know the the approach to Lane's house, but it's Mika this time, uh, Lane's sister, uh, coming home. And I appreciate this show's shift in perspective um, because again, I, I think a lot of folks at this point have this theory that oh well, you know the parents and the family are in on it, right? Mika has no clue who these guys are, the men in black are. Yeah, right. So clearly there's multiple, you know, factions at play here in what's going on around Lane. Uh, Mika's frankly scared, as yeah. you should be. <laughs> this was not part of my contract for this deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I, I, mm, yeah. Um, uh, it just be pointed out, um, notably here, that A, we have Redshift, but also that... The, the men in black are black. They're not part, they're not part of the shadows, right? They are distinct yeah. individuals right. um, yeah. uh, in all of this. Um, and uh, uh, they get that wonderfully creepy bit of, you know, how can you report us when we were never here? Just walks off. Think, oh, right. That kind of a thing. Um, we don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, we will find out later what's, what's going on with them. Um, then Mika comes home and finds Lane in her underwear. Um, and again, speaking of sexualization, I, I do appreciate that. Like you know, this is, you know, this is the least unclothed you ever see Lane in, in yeah. the show. Um, but uh, and she's just sitting there working on her computer uh, with a little. And it should be pointed out, um, those are little like grabby things for computer chips. Um, yeah. you, you press the one side and the right. prongs yeah. come it's got out. The little fingers. Yeah, exactly. Prongs so, it, yeah. He's what I didn't see. Yeah, it's Carl. Um, uh, so I, I, initially I thought, like, <laughs> why does she have a syringe in her mouth? No, no, no. It's, it's computer equipment. Heroin's a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? That was it. <laughs> Well, so too. I'm. A, I'm. A, my guess at mm. this would have been she's reducing her static electricity. Yeah, exactly. And, she's, and That's she mentions why she, she, is, she says. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, <clears throat> in fact, she has this like, very mundane conversation. Saying, yeah, it turns out that you know I gotta uh, take all your clothes off because static electricity. I'm installing this process yeah. or whatever. And Mika's shocked. Like Mika is clearly surprised by this, partly because Lane then just kind of turns to to Mika and says. You know, welcome home, big sister. Um, yeah, with a creepy ass. Yeah. With this totally, you know, I'm just going to see if I can get to it. Yep. I'll murder you later. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, and interestingly, also, it should be pointed out, she's saying it to us. Yeah. Right. Um, has Lane smiled before? Well, kind of like an uptick of a of a of a beginnings of a mm -hmm. trying, yeah, trying, yeah. No, uh, but like not that. an actual, With, yeah. not, not, mm -hmm. not not like you know. A, I mean that that smile was so, you know, psychotically <laughs> fake. It was, you know, it, it'd, be, it'd be like it'd be like if like mm -hmm. I said to you all, "Hi guys." <laughs> 
We all float down here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Georgie. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Um, that's the thing. And, and, and you're absolutely right. And, like, when um, uh, Lane was talking to her classmates and they are covering for her, she had a bit of a smile on her face and so forth. But totally nothing like this. No. Um, Lane has found her element. She is happy working with computers, doing the computer thing, because computers, yay. Um, wave of the future. Mm, yeah, exactly. Um, and just to underscore this point, uh, the anime series literally pixelates at this point. Um, the, the screen gets all pixelated and sort of grainy as though Lane is turning into a JPEG. Um, so, yeah, it is... Things are happening with Lane at this point. She is literally getting into... Into computers. In multiple ways. Yeah, her picture went from 480 by 240 to like something even lower res. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and can I just say how nice it is watching this in the, the, the Blu-ray version of this? Because, oh my gosh, the, uh, can only just the detail. Imagine. Oh gosh. A friend of mine watching it on VHS. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, not Which the best was perfectly experience. acceptable at the time. Well, you know, so actually, Lane came out on both DVD and VHS simultaneously. Um, it was back in, in you know, wow. it, it was it was at the time when both of those were you know common enough that you would do both those releases. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess that's when I bought all my James Bond on DVD. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess that's about yeah. that time. Um, no one bought it on VHS though. <laughs> like, everyone was like, hmm, hmm, VHS, DVD. Which would I rather have? Hmm. Um, an so unopened form? box set of VHS. Yeah, it would take up like half of a room. True, yeah. But still, think of how much the value would be. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unwatchable, but collectible. Oh, it's yeah. all heck. Totally. Um, then we move on to layer four, religion. As if things weren't complicated enough. Let's bring religion into, it, um, into all of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, we get Lane hooking up a computer, and again, it, it ne- needs to be said, this is all very late 90s accurate PC equipment. Yeah, ribbon cables everywhere. Yeah, ribbon cables everywhere. Yeah. You know. The memory yes. module lock-ins, <laughs> that, that's probably nice. like a whole, what, PCI. five megs of... Uh, Something of, of that. Of, yeah. yeah, pretty crazy. Um, uh, and so Lane is still working on her computer, uh, but we have transitioned. You know, look at how much stuff is in her room now. Yeah. It was one computer before. Now there's stuff everywhere. I love the little, like, vent fan on the side of the one thing that's like a, a, you know, um, uh, like a freaking blower on an AC unit, Um, which is probably what it is. Like, literally just an AC unit. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously the issue that's not said, Mm. but... This is all coming from somebody's yeah. bank account. Yeah, mm-hmm. around. Yeah. And the yep. only mm-hmm. bank account that's going to be coming from is going to be her father. Yep. Yeah, her father's yeah. absolutely like, bankrolling all of this. Yeah. Huh. So mm-hmm. why is he so vested in her having more and more stuff? Mm-hmm. Other than his statement, you know, what is it? That uh, the wired is for communication and information and it's yes. not reality. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, father, but you are like basically shoveling money to her to go and do crazy stuff. Yep. Stop it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and Yasuo take looks in. Take her out to dinner. But take her to a movie. <laughs> something. Anything normal, yeah. please. No, no, no. <laughs> um, interestingly, in the Lane PlayStation game, um, her father's gone on like a business trip. Yeah. Her father's not there at all. Um, and so I wonder if there isn't sort of a bit of relationship there. But yeah, Yasuo actually looks in during the scene and he does not look pleased, I'll be honest. He looks a little uncomfortable with what's going on there. Not sure. It should be pointed out, half of his eyeglasses are shrouded. Yeah. Um, typically when eyeglasses are shrouded, that means somebody is, is very internal, they're thinking about things, they're trying not to show themselves. So there's a certain sort of duality here between he's open, but he's also closed. Um, they're trying well, to be both of those. I think you've got the the blanked side is the project coordinator who's watching mm-hmm. it on his subject and yeah. the open side is what's left of his humanity <laughs> concern for a small child mm-hmm. yeah um or something even more complicated than that um, i, I think he's I, I think he's resentful of the fact that she's making a rig that's probably <laughs> and, and I'm not doing that, um, nicer than a rig <laughs> that's uh 
Yeah, basically, and or it can compete with his, and maybe mm-hmm. that he's worried that that she's eventually going to figure it out, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Quite possibly. And then, and then he's going to go Gendo Akari on her. And, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. well, that that, that works. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the last episode, what she hears on the train is, "You are not alone." Mm-hmm. That's like all I can think of is like, "You are not alone." No, 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 no. Is there going to be clapping? Is there going to be clapping? <laughs> there better not be. Yep. Good job, Shinji. Uh, Good job. Hey. Uh. Um, and so Mika actually is the one who starts talking. Here's where the theory that you know that that the, the, they're all in on it starts to get a little bit weird. Because they have a private conversation where Mika goes, Lane's acting weird. And Haile goes, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And it's like, if they're all in on this, they should all be knowing what's going on. So something, clearly something even bigger is going on than any of them realize or expect. Well, Mika, as the, as the contract daughter, uh, <laughs> I don't necessarily find it that too too weird that she mm. wouldn't be totally in on it mm. because the right. adults the adults have an agenda that they are setting out on and she is a player in this farce mm. so mm. The, so they're not filling her in lane's mm-hmm. acting weird it's like yeah because you're just expecting lane to do normal things mm-hmm. they're waiting to see where lane's going mm. mm-hmm. you know so don't worry about it we got this under control um <laughs> more that's a log <laughs> lane is going nuts um more that's a great point um i think there's also an aspect in that that um uh i think yasuo the father he thinks he knows what lane's doing but he's aware of the risks he you know he's like this seems to be going in the direction i want but who knows yeah. like it could all fall apart well, you also showed a scene there where his glasses <laughs> was... go all white. Yes, exactly. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, here's the researcher yeah. element. Thanks, to, yeah. Um, thanks to all the fix. And then um, the mother comes over and like puts a hand on him, and they embrace in this very interesting moment. This honestly, this feels to me. <laughs> Like the scene in every war anime of, you know, the meteorite is about to hit Earth. What are we going to do? We're just going right. to stay here together and get through this, you know. Um, it's very much this sort of resigned motion, I think. But still, there, like, there is affection there. There's, a, there's caring right. there, I'll say. Uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. Um, Professor, this whole thing's about to go Titanic. Right, and exactly. It's all your fault. It's grossly unethical. <laughs> but let's see it through to the end. Oh, so, God. so we've been dancing around this. Yeah. Um, or we've, been, we've been mentioning this. Um, uh, there's the theory that this is a constructed family. Um, my theory is that it's not a constructed family. My theory is that this is Yasuo's wife and daughter. Uh, that when everything went down, which we'll get to later on, um, Lane needed a family. They needed to place Lane in a family. And so Yasuo, the head researcher, which we'll get to later again, um, they placed her with his family. The family knows what, you know, broadly what's going on. They, 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 they are aware that Lane is you know, not a normal girl. Special. Is special. Um, but they're, they're not part of the project. right? They were literally just his wife and daughter who were home. Um, and they've all kind of provisionally agreed to do this because the consequences are not worth, do not bear thinking about. That's my theory about what's going on here. Um, but again, plenty of other, other options that's going on. And you're wrong. And I'm wrong. And you're wrong. Exactly. Well, I think <laughs> um, any time that you, uh, that you get involved with any know. other kids mm. and, uh, the systems that are involved mm-hmm. with, with kids, mm-hmm. you uh, <clears throat> you have you have to be really on board as a as a unit to be able to control mm-hmm. what might happen. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, um, yeah, it's a good point, Morph. You know, uh, uh, you know, Kanaka was kind of not quite writing it as he was going, but I'm sure he didn't have every detail exactly pl- you know plotted out, you know, um, as he as he was doing everything. So I'm sure there were. Things planted in there, much like Evangelion, you know. Here are here are themes I'm working in here, but I don't have like every every line of the last episode sure. all nailed down yet. Um, and then we get <laughs> um, 
Yeah, the, the, the horror scene. Um, just straight up a horror scene. This guy being chased by a little girl. Um, uh, who uh, completely freaks him out. It should also be pointed out, this is kind of a, a significant thing, is that he's trying to get into his house, but he can't get the key into the door. Yeah. And at first, the door. It, yeah. it's like he's, he's just like, and it fumbles, and it, but it, it's like there is something physically preventing him from doing that. It's like his, his, his physical body isn't quite under his control anymore. And I think that's key to understanding the scene, so to speak. Um, that he's not just scared. There's also like some physical effect to what's going on here. Um, and the scene is very dragged out. I think this is, well, this is playing forward to a scene later on. Um, um, but it's just kind of layering on, okay, here, here's a horror moment. Um, and then, uh, and, and then we get a scene with, with, with Lane. Um, she is reading, um, Oh, um, the, the guy with the keys, it, it had occurred to me at the time. It's like, I wonder if you have, if you could make this into a digital world where mm. instead of key to log in, that oh. something has changed fundamentally mm -hmm. where you no longer have access to the key to log out. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. physically right. he can't, he cannot get the right key to mm -hmm. get out yeah. before mm -hmm. he's overtaken by what's going on in the system. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely possible. That's, I don't know. That, 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 that makes sense to me. It, but... No, I, I like that a lot. Wait, yeah, because uh, well, I mean, when I was watching, of course, watching this, this uh, I was like, oh, great, we have pedophiles now. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> And and that's where I, until you know it, it talks about what mm. was actually a tag on you know mm. system of a kids game that, that somehow got in here and everything got twisted. Mm -hmm. I literally thought it was like okay, oh these are all the pedophiles and this is the the, the ghost and shell girl going after. Mm. All of them. And mm -hmm. like, it's hell girl. You know, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. hell girl. You know, like you know, circle whatever crawling out of the TV and whatnot. Yeah. And I really thought that that was that was it at first, mm -hmm. and you know, and but then I saw. Then you see the parental person, the the, the seems to be like the mother of the little girl, mm -hmm. and yeah. she's kind of like, you know, she's closing. She puts her hand on the door next to the guy, and the guy's just like, mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. and then commits suicide. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Um. Yeah, um, and then we, Lane in school. Um, Lane is suddenly confident. She is having a perfectly normal conversation with Alice to the point where, like, Rekha comments on it. Yeah. And says Lane's fine. By the way, um, Lane is reading Hacker Heavens Volume 5. Um, I've Googled that. It does not appear to be an actual book. Uh, it might yep. have been at the, at the time. It might be a, you know, Japanese novel of some kind, Japanese novel series. Right. Um, but I, I, you know, haven't been able to track that one down, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. Um, uh, and so, um, they're all coming home. Um, by the way, this scene with them all walking home is something of a reference to the video game. Um, there's a, there's a scene in that where Lane is interacting with other girls from her school and it's very creepy and weird. Um, and so this seems to be, and it's, and it's like literally from like across the street, same angle. Um, oh. so I think they're kind of doing a, a similar thing here. Um, but... It's great. Lane's normal now. It's going to be fine from now on, right? She's fixed. She's fixed, right? Sweet. <laughs> um, no. No, no. Because the voices she... keep saying hi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, because Alice bumps into a girl. Oh, my Lord. What? I don't know. The little stuffed animal the girl has. That's oh, the exact yeah. same stuffed animal that Lane has in the video game. It yeah, is yeah. also the exact same stuffed animal in Omnipresent and Wired, which I'm going to get for a minute because this is important. Which Brent has right here under the desk. Da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> What's reality? What's digital? <laughs> oh, God, no. So this is the official uh, art book um, for Lane. And one of the things in here... I'll see if I can find real quick, is a short comic that Abe made about Lane. Um, hopefully I can find it in here. That looks like it. 
Uh, <laughs> that was like part of it. Um, lots of great illustrations here, which again is good. Oh, there we go. Um, because it features. Lane and well, yep. up the, 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 yeah. cutting up that little dog thing. And the reason she does that, by the way, in case you're curious, um, uh, by the way, it starts talking to her, which is great. Um, well, it starts barking at her. Um, but she's barking mad. Mm -hmm. yes, indeed. Um, oh, it doesn't show that. Okay, never mind, never mind. Um, but yeah, stuff happens. So she cuts there's a reference. The data dog and it has well, a chip. In, in, the, in the game, yes. Like the, the, the dog has electronics inside it. Um, in fact, there's a whole theory um, about what's going on in the game, which I'm not sure about yet. But anyway, yeah, that's a thing. Oh, uh, and you know, Kanaka loves dogs. D dolls, rather. Dolls are very much a theme in Kanaka's work. So, wow, we've just found a thing. Cool. Um, yeah, wow. All right. Uh, so, Bike chan is the name of the, the character. Um, yeah, that's a thing. Um, so, we come back to Lane doing her thing. It just be pointed out how much her, her interactions with the Wired have changed. She gets an email from somebody who, who gives her some instructions. Remember before when she got the email from Chisa, she's like talking back to the screen as though she could. Yeah. Now he says something and she like goes down, checks a connection, comes back. Like this is perfectly normal. Just yeah. hearing voicemails and um, she's totally comfortable. Um, um, and yeah, and here's where we get our first image. Can you imagine if some of your voice. Go ahead. Can you imagine if just some of your emails actually talk back to you? Yeah. Oh, God. Like, you know, some of the things you said, some of the stuff that might come out. Well, the text to speech in 1998 was not great. <laughs> right. I mean, granted, that's how they did the, you know, the layer announcements. So, yep. yeah. Um, yeah, this is where we get the, uh, are you the iconic image of Lane with the, the monitors. Screens in her eyes. eyes. Yep, which is not a symbol at all. Um, no. Are they are they in her eyes or are they no. in her eyes? Yeah. Um, it should also be pointed. Uh, let's see here. Um, um, and now we cut back to JJ at Club Siberia, uh, where he gets a, a question from Lane, which he answers. But you, but you don't see Lane. Lane's not there. It's just her voice. It's just her voice. So here's my theory. Well, we, we do know later on, Siberia is a special place, sort of cybernetically. Mm -hmm. you know, stuff's going on there electronically. So if Lane now has this connection to the wire, she's now very familiar with the wired, and we know now that like the wires are speaking to her literally. I think she is now able to go out, um, and she can't necessarily do this anywhere in the world. But because Siberia is kind of a weak point, I think she can now access Siberia and do what, you know, folks have apparently been doing in terms of reaching out and connecting to people. Um, yeah. Which also, too, <laughs> if, if it happens to be that Siberia is actually a chat room mm -hmm. and that now she's already been invited. She's mm -hmm. been in there mm -hmm. once and we got frustrated. Yeah. She was invited with friends to go in and now she is familiar enough with how to access mm -hmm. Siberia. Mm -hmm. Now she's participating and she doesn't even need an avatar. Mm -hmm. She can yeah. just participate directly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like to rants. If, if Lane were made today, it would be the wireless, not the wired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we get the 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 scene that uh, that kind of starts going in some dark directions. Um, first off, uh, the kid sees Lane in the wired, um, which is very odd. Um, starts running away from 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 her. And he's playing Doom. He's playing or Doom. That, yeah. Or is that uh, Castle right, Wolf? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's true. Brick walls, yeah. more, more, yeah, more Wolfenstein 3D. Um, uh, he smashes his Navi, which doesn't help. 
so clearly something bad is going on here. Um, he's freaking out. Um, uh, little girl shows up to freak him out even further, because that would freak me out too. Um, and then he starts shooting her. And he succeeds. Um, and I would argue this is where the show, I wouldn't say gets serious, <clears throat> but suddenly the, the tone shifts in this scene. You know, obviously, we have the suicide in the club, which is very dramatic, almost melodramatic. You know, very big, you know, epic, sort of operatic moment. This is so quiet, so drawn out, and you see the sheet fluttering over the body, and you realize, oh, yeah. crap, he literally, literally shot. shot a kid. Um, and it's a kid shooting a kid, and you get this wonderful moment of him, this horrible moment of him crouching on his knees just realizing everything's coming down on him, realizing what yeah. he just did. Yeah. Um, I believe it is the same girl um, as before, but not clear. Um, well, and this is, you know, I thought him with the phantom gun mm -hmm. and Lane is he, he is psychologically invested so much in mm. this world mm -hmm. that he cannot differentiate between mm. what is the real and the mm -hmm. not real so he's really ra you know racking mm. the slide on a mm -hmm. gun mm -hmm. but he's he can't uh, see it. he's so vested yeah, 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 in what's going yeah. on mm -hmm. and he tried like the guy who's trying to get the keys to get out right right mm -hmm. yeah. he smashes his his interface mm -hmm. in that world to get out mm -hmm. and he can't and yep. he's now doing things he can't see mm -hmm. would he have shot a child of course if not. he Probably. could have seen the gun in his right, hand racket right. shoot. Mm -hmm. No, he can't. It's invisible. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going on, but he doesn't know what's going mm -hmm. on. And the consequences are like, yeah. crap. Yeah. You know? And that's this moment where it's like, what have I done? Yeah, yeah. The other side of the, the, the possibility, and I, I love that explanation, yeah. is that um, the real world and the wired have become so intermeshed that... You know, using the, the virtual, you know, he's got some sort of, you know, leap motion kind of, you know, motion generated thing to where you're know, doing this means reloading the gun and doing this means firing right. the gun. Um, they become so enmeshed that doing that literally causes a shot to be fired in the real world. Um, oh. And that, you know, that has now had physical manifestations in the real world. Right. Uh, but I think either of these could definitely be what's going on. Well, I think um, in oh, the beginning yeah. of Lane, where you see everybody is gathered around and sees Lane on the monitor, and then you see a kid with like a VR eye covering mm -hmm. on, looking at a monitor that has Lane's face, mm -hmm. and he's playing on a game console. Yeah, you know, it's like all of that. the The sensory input is all what's in here, mm -hmm. and not what's in the real world. Even though he's in the real world doing real things, so that yeah. the the blend between you are physically doing something at your gaming station and what you're seeing and the physical reactions of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, geez. yeah. Um, it should also be pointed out, and um, thank you more for reminding me of this. I had forgotten about this. Um, in 1997, a 14-year-old boy, apparently, um, killed a 10-year-old and an 11-year-old in Kobe. Um, mm. uh, and it was arrested in 1997 um, and later confessed to both murders. Um, we don't know his name because he was a juvenile and all that right. kind of stuff. Um, it was gruesome. Um, and um, he... Uh, see, um, a letter was sent uh, in which he claimed responsibility and began the, it with the phrase, now it's the beginning of a game. Now, I, I am not suggesting that Kanaka was necessarily using that as the inspiration, but as, as Morph points out, <laughs> putting that in the anime <laughs> was a very controversial, difficult decision. They couldn't show blood. They couldn't show all sorts of stuff because of the potential connection to these things. And obviously, they're not doing the same thing here. But uh, boy, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Um, if, you, if, if you are curious, look up the, the Kobe child murders. That's the Wikipedia article. It, you know, if you want to go down that road. Um, but yes, there's a certain amount of this. And Lane is looking. 
Lane sees this in her blue glowy um, thing. Mm-hmm. And again, it should be pointed out, um, speaking of sexu- you know, sexualizing, in other anime series, this would be glowy anime nudity. Right? Um, yeah. Nope, they don't go down that road. Thank you. Um, but she's looking on and she's sad. Or she's at least disappointed. Like, this is not how it should have turned out. Right. Um, and then we get, uh, frankly, <laughs> info dump. Um, of what was going on there. And as, as you mentioned, John, there's a, uh, you know, a, a, a Doom got connected up to Minecraft. Yeah. Um, and a bunch of you know, little kids right. got into this, this murder game. Um, and so bad things are happening, obviously. Um, we get a sense of it. Um, and then we get a really important scene, I think, with Yasuo, where he walks in on Lane and he's impressed. Um, he, yeah, he likes what he sees in terms of what's going on here. Um, but he asks Lane, like, you know, what's going on? And she, she says, she, she turns around and she goes, don't worry, daddy, I'm still me. It what does that mean? Me way at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but then well beyond kind of that, that creepiness, it's like, you know, what does that mean? Right? Who are you? Who is any of us? Like, and yeah. nobody stays the same person forever. We all evolve. We all change over time. So it's this very interesting, and it's, it's in a sense a very childlike response to things. Of, it's okay. I haven't changed. I'm just the same old person. No, you're not. No one ever is. <laughs> like, that's a... Yeah. No, no. Uh, did you notice that her super mainframe was the HAL Power 5000? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I forgot that. That's a great point. <laughs> I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> mm. Got a big glowy eye thing floating around in there. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. Go ahead, Lane. Say it. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. Exactly. <laughs> oh. I can't do that, Lane. <laughs> Kill all humans. No, wait a minute. Exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, there we go. Um, and we now see her going into uh, computer code. And this is assembly, uh, which is a very low-level computer code. Yeah. Um, this is very, very hard stuff to write in. Nobody writes in assembly anymore. Um, even at the time, it was it is was it harder than basic. Things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it lower level than basic? <laughs> Nothing's lower level than basic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, and for those curious, um, um, assembly is basically um, um, the code that you write to interface directly with the hardware. So is so these commands are literally, you know, take a byte of data out of here and put it into register number three thousand eight hundred forty-two. Compare that. Is that greater than or less than this? If it's greater than, go here. If it's less than, go there. It, it's very simple stuff because you're dealing literally with the little registry, uh, memory registers and just the comparison logic to go back and forth. And so C and so forth, all, you know, all those, those things compiled down to assembly, which then gets translated directly to machine code. Um, sorry, wow. programmer uh, talk. Um, that's a great point, Morph. I think you're absolutely right. In that previous, in, in this scene, um, in a sense, Yasuo is laying out the themes of the show to to Lane. Um, you know, you are in this new environment. It can change you. And Lane is refuses to believe that at this point. Um, no, Daddy, I'm not becoming the evil goddess of the internet. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, I'm still the well, same person. I think person. By, the, by the point of you know telling her, oh, the, the, the wire's not reality. It, it's too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. It's like if you had put the brakes on this train when she turned the, her mm-hmm. first Navi, her kid's Navi, around, mm-hmm. then you could have probably gotten this like on a different track. Mm-hmm. But you fostered how this was going to go. Oh, and yeah. you watched it and mm-hmm. you let it happen. You mm-hmm. let her get the extra equipment. You all mm-hmm. this. You know, you cut the credit card, everything would have, like, slowed way the hell down. Right. Like, mm-hmm. But I would argue <laughs> that um, that's his job. Yes. You know, he has to yeah. do oh, I don't think also more, I think yeah. that's, that's, like, um, that seems to be the yeah. evidence and, fact. And, and, and further in detail, I think that that is, it's not just his job. Like, that's what needs to happen. Like, he realizes that Lane needs to connect to the wire for other big plot reasons. Right. Um, but he's... Try and I think because and we'll get to this later. I keep saying this. Um, <laughs> he's not. It, it, he does not feel responsible for her psychologically. 
I don't think that was part of his his job. And so he didn't really know how to relate to her. But now that he's seeing where this is going, he's trying to play that role. He's trying to sort of probe her psychologically to say, is this going in the right direction? It's going in that direction. Let's we'll see. Um, that's a great mor- point, Morph, too. I think, I think he starts to care for her personally. I think he is starting to warm up to, to Lane as, as a human being. Um, there's definitely something there. She? But, but, well, she? well, well, this is, you know, this is one of those things. We'll get to that. As we learned from Professor Hodge, <laughs> Hodgson, I think it was yeah, Professor so. Hodgson. Mm-hmm. Um, Yas was not willing to go so far as to be callous and cold. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, there is a, a modicum of humanity to him. Yes, absolutely. That his interactions with Lane, while very professional in most respects, he does mm. have some humanity to him, hence why he is embracing, mm-hmm. you know, rent a wife, why he's holding on to her in the, mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. the, 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 why he's reading the newspaper. Mm-hmm. It's like he still has some element of sure. himself to, to what he's doing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> also, a little better, yeah. Ch- you know, yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, in fairness to Yasuo, you know, if you are in the same house as, you know, the mother goddess of the internet, you're going to tread really effing lightly. <laughs> so it could be he's like, oh, this is going in directions. I, I don't want to not just get emotionally involved, but I don't know how to relate to this individual. Right. Yeah, this is, this is just beyond me. Who knows? Um, he should try um, bringing her offerings of cookies. And right, exactly, yes. <laughs> Um, and you know, uh, please and... don't hit the history erase button. <laughs> Have some milk. Uh, um, be fine. And you're absolutely right, Morph. I mean, they what are technically to both the his previous father. family. <laughs> we don't. We don't talk about it exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, They've been sent to the cornfield. Right. Oh no. Oh. Um, <laughs> and 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 in this we get a, a bit more of the sort of misinformation of the wire and we talked about before about how prescient the show is about uh, yeah this this is not the uh, the internet is not the, the great treasure trove of, of humankind's uh, knowledge that you can just access instantly like it's it's full of BS uh, and people screaming at each other yeah um, all caps right exactly You're wrong. <laughs> If only um, in 1998 they'd have known what emojis were. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Everything would be, would be better. Um, but she starts seeing little red lights dancing around her, her room. Yeah. Yes, she does. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, love the, the show's symbolism here, where we see this, and even if we've seen this stuff before, we're like snipers. Yeah. Right. Right. That, that, that's what red dots on a wall means in a show like this. Um, I can solve your internet goddess problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a great point, Matt. Actually, um, um, if Lane is this constructed being, or is at least not what what he thinks it is, Yasuo would have no idea what personality she'd have. Hmm. So it, it, there's this girl, and she's interacting this way, and he doesn't know how to relate to her because he doesn't know where she's going. Um. That's a good point. That would also factor into how he's related to her. I would say she's going off the rails on the crazy train. <laughs> or she lives in a very crazy world and is trying to make sense of it. Um, Steve's singing now. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I agree with you there, Morph. Um, and so Lane gets really pissed off. And again, think about how different Lane is here compared to episode yeah. one. She has this visceral emotional yeah. reaction. She's angry. She's feeling violated. Um, as as the uh, things, and I love how she looks down she's and she starts. Away. No, not at all. Um, and she looks down at them, and she, and no. and she's angry, and they're just murmuring at each other. They're just having a conversation very casually, um, like this isn't this isn't violating at all. Um, uh, and uh, see if I can if I can see the image. You know, okay, we're we're about there. Mm where she yells at them to go away and um yeah things happen her window like fluctuates and flutters 
and one of the men in black's eye things explodes. Yeah. Some powers have awakened, one might say. Yes. Which is what I thought initially, until we cut back to her room, and her computer says, Intruder Eliminated. So that wasn't just some psychic, you know, X-Men power she just used. That was a firewall. That was some software on her computer that did something, you know, out there to make that happen. Yep. So this isn't just, you know, so the, clearly Lane is like setting things up in her environment to deal with these problems and so forth. Now, obviously, there's also some weird X-Men power going on here as well. But... yeah. There's multiple levels in here, which I really, really love. Um, uh, and yeah, and then we just, we, we cut to this, you know, kind of classic shot of just kind of the city ending to be continued, which I will admit is not the most amazing ending to, to the episode. It's a bit like panning up to the sky, but that's okay. It happens sometimes. Um, You've got a lot to think to on. Yes. So. Well, at this uh, point, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, at this yep. point, you're just like, you're just like going like this, going, oh, please, God, something horrible. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you know, Lane is suddenly, you know, um, Scott Summers. And it's like, oh, okay, this is not where I thought this, this, this would go. Um, this is, this is a little creepy. Um... Oh, good to hear that spin. Welcome, welcome. Um, but yes, things have definitely progressed plot-wise in Serial Experiments Lane. So, Steve, what are you thinking about the show at this point? Everything inside my brain case thing hurts a lot. <laughs> Syntax, communication... <laughs> Poor now, <laughs> no. Um, actually, I, I, I'm really liking it. Um, I'm like, I'm you know listening to, to theories and um, you know trying to to you know, make the pieces fit. Mm -hmm. And um, it's I I think I think one of the things I like about this is that it's fair in storytelling. In that you know that it's you know you're not. <sighs> there are red herrings but it's not meant to like really you know just you know to f with you i think it's mm -hmm. just more along the lines mm -hmm. of this is what the story is and these are the, the, the avenues we go down and then we finally stop and we have to go down another avenue mm -hmm. and i think it's fair in that it's not like a a whodunit mystery where they keep the, the facts away from yeah. you yeah you know what i mean <laughs> and so you cannot possibly figure it out they throw everything at you and you're just like, and, and it's up to you to figure out going, okay, well, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. And then I put it together and oh my God, what, how, 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 my head is piercing pain right here. Mm -hmm. And, um, but no, it's, it's fun trying to figure it out and, and I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Right? Cool. So, you know, despite the mental trauma. <laughs> yeah. There are definitely times when it feels like Lane is a 50 episode series and they just plucked 13 different episodes out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the rest of it? Yeah. <laughs> um, John, what are your thoughts at this point on the rewatch? I never noticed the red blue shift. Yeah. First time. That's around. a great. I spent movie. so much time being like, and ah, blue here. what's going on? How's this happening? It's yeah. a very blue scene. Should we point out? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're right. And it's like that. That got. I don't. It, it's not that it distracted mm -hmm. me, but it like it's started me at going looking and like what okay what did i miss <laughs> you know we talked about she saw and then like how her when she shows up there's this blue strange shadow yeah. and there's these red strange shadows mm -hmm. and it's like okay now i gotta go backwards and think about now where did i see all this stuff mm -hmm. so it's it's the rewatch has been more of that it's like okay i'm starting to see more things i didn't see yeah and I'm having to go back and remember the things I've already seen mm -hmm. twice now. Yeah. And then to plug back, plug in what I'm learning going forward to the things that happened before. Yep. <laughs> like, okay. Uh. And for those of you watching this who feel, oh my gosh, I, you know, um, what is this show? Or, 
you know, I must be dumb for not seeing any of this stuff. I never saw the red, red, blue shift, and this is what my fourth time watching it. So it is totally normal <laughs> to not see a lot of these little bits and pieces because it's not obvious. Yeah. And I'm, you know, oh, and blue screen of death. Good catch. That's interesting. Yeah. Blue screen of the death. Blue screen death. Ooh. General protection fault screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's CPF. a blue screen. Yes, ah. I wonder. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt in trying to focus on the things that are there that I missed a ton of other stuff that's mm-hmm. in there that I just haven't, you know, I was, I've only got so much brain. <laughs> <laughs> Steve has adequately pointed out. There's only so much this to go into that. So mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. Yeah, there's there's a lot here. Um, yes. Yeah, it's why. And Brent, like, you're rewatching. What do you? How, yeah. What's your? Um, I I am I'm as I mentioned before. I'm very glad that I took a, that. I've, it's been a while since I watched Lane, um, because coming at it from a fresh perspective is is very helpful. I think there are so many different bits and pieces that you can get kind of distracted. You can get sort of um, um, really focused on the weeds of the details of the show and not appreciate all the groundwork that's being laid, all the different pieces, like the, you know, um, um, I'm sorry, which hit like a ton of bricks this time. And I realized, oh, that's, that's, that's going to come back around. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it as a, Lane is, as I mentioned, Lane's a giant jigsaw puzzle. And you're seeing these little pieces and I'm enjoying seeing the pieces now because I can see more of the patterns between the pieces. Um, uh, and also, I got to admit, um, in the early watchings, I wasn't as much of a... The characters didn't connect to me the way they connect to me now. Um, the characters feel more realistic to me on this, on this watch-through. Not that they felt unrealistic before, but... Um, because we don't spend that much time with any one character, um, they felt a little weird. They felt a little, like, just not much there. And I realized because we're seeing so little of them, they feel realistic in a way that you don't see in other anime series. None of the characters here fit an anime stereotype. And I really appreciate that. Um, that it's not trying to fit anything into an existing mold. Um, instead, you just have people who are going about their lives and doing their things. And, you know, we'll meet somebody who is a pretty crazy anime villain type, but you can also kind of see where he's coming from. Like, you, you, you've, I've met people who are, who are going down that road probably at some point in the future. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I really like that stuff. Um, and I hear you more, you know, episode four is a little fillery. Um, there's a, you know... A lot of the material is stretched out a little bit in this episode, um, but I, I, I think we're rolling at this point. You know, we, we've got a lot of material to work on um, and to, to kind of um, to chew on at this point. But yeah, um, and yeah, and then there is kind of the general dis- distance of the story. You're right. Um, you know, Lane is an introvert, and she's shy, and so she is not connected to any, any, anyone else. Uh, but she will be. She's making connections. Yes, we are all connected. She has to get herself connected because the writing's on the wall. Mm. And and to to anyone in chat land who is like me, this is your first time watching through this. It does feel like you're trying to break an obsidian rock with a Q-tip, but <laughs> just keep at it. <laughs> it's it's mm-hmm. worth it. It's yeah. keep at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's there. Cool. All right. That will do it. Uh, Thank you all for the discussion and analysis. We'll be back um, actually in two weeks. We'll take a break next week with the next two episodes. Um, But right now, we're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes. Then we'll be back to talk about some more modern anime and the latest anime news. Two episodes. And it's been an hour and a half. (laughs) An hour and 20 minutes. Oh, God. Yep. Yep, that's lame. Wow, that just tells you how much we're unpacking from this. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yes, there is. And this is only one more. through four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right, we're going to do a quick break. We'll be back with some news back in just a minute. See you in a few minutes. Be right back. <laughs> 